Welcome to the channel. As you're about to see, the intro, the re this, this is the end of the video. This is being filmed. I just finished filming the outro, as you'll notice at the end. But uh, anyway, yeah, let's get into the video. And yeah, let's go back like, I don't know, six days ago, seven days ago. You'll, you'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first Will It Start on the channel. As you can see, I, uh, I bought something. What we have here is a real piece of junk that uh, hasn't run in 20 years. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the... Uh, the right thing and uh, see if this old cream puff will uh, run. First off, I apologize for one, my voice, because I've had a cold all week. And then two, I'm filming on an iPhone 8. So y'all gotta be like, I don't know, you're probably 10 feet away from me or something. Not really, but you're that, you're, you're far, you're, you're far. That's all I'm saying. But anyway. What we got here is a uh, 1985 Nissan 720 that ain't run 20 years. Well, I assume 20 years because the tag says 2000. So 22 years ago was the last time it was registered. I got on the old Facebook marketplace one day and I saw a listing of a Toyota Celica from about the same, same era. And, uh, Got one at a thousand dollars for it. And I said, ha! No, thank you. And I just clicked, you know, hit the, the button and I went out of it. And we'll look at it no more. But, a few, few days pass, and uh, that list, in that listing, there were several cars lined up uh, in the woods, in the middle of nowhere, just sitting there. But anyway, a couple of weeks pass, and, uh, Look on Marketplace again, and there's a new listing up, and it says, last two trucks. So naturally, naturally I click on it, and uh, what does it see? Well, you see this baby there, and uh, a Toyota pickup, I don't know what you call it. It was a million pieces. Anyway, I say, look, might as well text the guy. So I did. And I said, uh, these trucks here ain't worth nothing but scrap value to me. So really, my best offer is uh, a steak dinner and a tank of gas. And actually, he said yes. So, about a week passes, get a trailer, and uh, I see another listing. And find out the same guy, and what's going on is it's an estate sale. And anyway, he was selling it a lot, and I saw a lawnmower on there, and I said, I'll take that too. And he said, all right. So I bought that too. And then we went to go pick him up. He gave us directions, and he called me, or I called him, and he said, uh, I also got six or seven more lawnmowers, and I said, I'll take those too. And uh, yeah, we, we filled a whole 10 by 6 trailer, front to back, side to side, top to bottom, with lawnmowers and parts. And then we come back a few days later, and we finally roll it on the trailer, pick it up, take it home, and drop it off. And that's that. And now, I've been sitting outside for a few weeks. I've had it for a few weeks because, well, I've been in school and haven't been able to work on it. Because i got other things to do. So, we're going we're gonna to do the right thing and uh, see if we can get this thing to run. Because, you know, why not? Because that's what we should do. But, uh, pulled in here today, earlier today. Pushed it in because it's been raining all day, and I really don't feel like working in the rain or the dark. So, uh, here we are. So, giving you a walk around on this, this this cream puff here. So, long story short, the steak dinner and taking gas that I'm that I was talking about 
Ended up being a hundred bucks for this thing. Look at that. Also, that grill was not there, as you saw in the intro. Yes, I filmed the intro earlier, and uh, then realized when I filmed this section of it that you couldn't see my head when I was talking. So I refilmed it all. Now it's now it's nighttime. It's like five hours later. What I bought this for is because I said I looked at the pictures and I said, man, there's probably a lot of good parts on that. I found out there was an engine in transit it, so I said, yep, I'll take it. So what we got here is bad grill, bad headlights, bad bumper, bad thing down here, hood's trash. This fender is has a crease in it here, which you can feel pretty good. And there's some stuff down here that's creased. But might be savable. It's got a good bumper corner here. That's bad. This bumper corner is bent a little bit, but might be able. Eh, it's chrome, so it may not come back. That one's bad. This fender's bad. Beautiful rust holes in the hood. I don't know why Japanese vehicles rust like this in the hood. But oh, and is missing. Didn't see that. <laughs> uh, two ribs over here that are good. Uh, this door is straight as an arrow. Except for right up here where the tree had fallen on it. It kind of bit this part in a little bit. But as you can see, the cab, cab is trash. Bottom of it though, the floor and the back wall, and I assume firewall, is immaculate. They're perfect. Rockers are good. Cab quarters are solid. So cabs were some parts, of course. If you want to cut those off and weld them onto one that's rusted. I'm going to chop the top and weld the new top on it. Bed is absolutely perfect. Almost straight as an arrow. Just back over on that corner where the light. There's a couple very small dents. Might be one right there. Yeah, there's one right there on top of that light. But they're very, very small. It could easily be pushed out. Of course, too. That's, that's bad. But even look, even the wheel wells aren't very dented up. Just a little bit. They're not bad. The floor in here is still has the paint on it. I, d I did that scratch from loading a bumper in here when we picked it up. But it still has the paint on it. So I gotta wash it out. But Glass is all good except for the front one, obviously. Uh, tail light here is good. No, this is the bad tail light. That one over there is good. Tailgate is pretty good. It's got Bondo on it. On the end, it's cracked, the, cracked there. Holy cow, this is really zoomed in. Cracked there. Dipped it in a little back here, but that's all all right. It doesn't open. That's why it's cracked open. I took this off earlier and opened it up so I can clean it out. But it's pretty straight. It can be reused. Someone took the back bumper off and put a pan there. I had the back bumper, but I, I'll, if the pan's on it, I'm selling it with the pan because it's kind of rusted. It's kind of junk anyway. And I'll just keep the bumper and reuse it or sell it on something. Good axle in it. Uh, six lug at that. And uh, broke stud off trying to get it. This, this wheel is locked up. This door is a little more dented up. Could be pushed out and reused. I did that one down there. But could be pushed out and reused. Well, let's say someone who needs like a front clip on, for the... Or the fender and door or something. Good cab corners and rockers here. The frame is absolutely solid. I mean, the frame is immaculate. You can see the bed rails are all good. Anyway, what I'm saying is there's a bunch of good parts on it. Good mirror. Probably, I doubt, and I don't think anything in here is good. Of course, it's doing work, but door panels are obviously shot. Uh, I don't think anything in here is good because it's been getting rained on for years and years and years. Um, got visors, they look terrible. Uh, but it is a five speed. Oh, I don't, let me take that back. I don't know if it's a five speed. I know it's a manual, that's all I know. And I know the clutch is stuck. So, it's stuck down. Um, huh, AC, I didn't say an AC compressor. There's a seat to it, shocks are missing. Man, this thing bounces, I tell you. No windshield wipers. But let's look under the hood here, because that's a great idea. Okie dokie. Let's see what we got on the power barn here. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a four cylinder with eight spark plugs. Great. But anyway.
I looked at the hair earlier. It's got the great stuff in it. It's good. Um, the wiring. The wiring is beautiful. It's just, it's, the wiring is you know, every, everything you want to see, you know? N nothing broken or, uh, nothing stripped, no mouse nest wasn't here, nothing like that. There's no, nothing unplugged, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's great. That's all, that's all I'm saying. It's great. We're probably just going to skip the part getting the stuff to do the thingy and, uh, just go straight to the starter. And make it spitty spitty because we did check before we bought it made sure it spun by hand and it does spin it spins it spins pretty good so that's good check under here and uh clean the whistle that's what i'm saying under here real clean too but on top here whoo she had a big mouse nest anyway i guess it's time to see what we can do here Okie dokie, we'll just uh, come over here, get the old battery out of here, yup, okay, let's do it like this, I do believe, positive, woohoo, little bit dirty. No sparks. It's not good. Kind of hoping for some sparks, but no, we don't have them right now. Gonna have to work on that. All right, so then we got that in. All right, no, we got nothing. Sorry, tried that. So I'm gonna go get the test light and uh, poke around a little bit. See what I can find. Maybe we can get it working with the key. Probably not. I poked around for a little bit. And, uh, nope. It got power. Touched a bunch of wires. There ain't nothing in front of it I can see. Not really digging into stuff. And this truck is not worth digging into that much. So we're going to go straight to the starter and figure this out another way. Because that, that's just the right way to do it. here on another note the skid plate is uh let's go okie dokie what's going on under here maybe i should put it on jack stand this is really low yeah let's get the jack stands that one hurt Let's not do that again. Wow. That gave me no clearance at all. Just enough for the spiders to come find me. Uh, I need a lift. I got, I got me an idea. Let's find where the single wire goes. Oh, what do we got in there? There it is. I see. It's in the blind man. Let's see what we find. Oh my gosh, someone is calling me. Who is calling me? All right, so here's what I'm looking at here. Starter's down there. And uh, hopefully the solenoid does the thingy. That'd be nice. But what I did is look way down in there, way in the back, and uh, you can't see it <laughs> at all. But there's a wire down there. So it's black and red. It's black with a red stripe that goes, I believe, to the starter. Oh well, definitely the starter. 
but to the solenoid on it and it's the little wire. So if it's anything like a lawnmower, which it's probably not, that wire should be the one that if I put power to it, knocks the starter over, pushes it over. So I found it up here and I cut it so I can extend it. I'm gonna try to reach it up here to the positive and just see if I can't get that starter spin over. Hopefully that's what happens. We're gonna find out. All right. Got the wire hooked up, just long enough to get to the battery post, but uh, I assume I cut the right wire, so hopefully I did. Probably not, but all we can do is find out and see what we got. Hopefully I don't get shocked. <laughs> Would you look at that? She spins over. Well, it is getting kind of late. I do need to go inside. And uh, I'd say that's a good stopping point for the night. So uh, come back down tomorrow and uh, throw the uh, new coil on it. See if I can't get some spark out of it. And uh, throw some go go juice down the hatch there and uh, see if we, she can't roar to life. You know. Anyway, I'll be back tomorrow and try to get this thing to fire off and then maybe even get that clutch working and try and take it for a drive. That'd be nice. Alright. Well, as you can see by the light and stuff. It's the next day. Now we're working on uh, getting the ignition coil wired up. And what I found out, being that this is a Z24 engine, I know nothing about Nissans. Because as you can tell, I'm, I'm a Nissan guy by my hat. Nissan fanatic, as you can see. But, I know nothing about this. So, what I found out by... Uh, these two things here, those two there, there's a, this one, and there's a black wire that matches it somewhere, and then there's two more. This type of motor, if you're a Nissan person, you know this, but this type of motor uses two ignition coils, and uh, this one says here, use with external resistor, and that is my battle. I cannot use these wires because, well, the harness in the truck has no power at all, so I have to make the engine run independently from the truck. And, uh, so these are useless to me. And I've looked and looked for a resistor, and I don't think there's a re unless that's the resistor. I doubt it. That may be. Have to look into that. I'm still figuring this out. I've been researching for about good 40 minutes in here trying to figure this out trying to find a resistor in this truck and being that so many things have already been taken out of this truck no one makes sense that resistor is missing too since the ignition coils are missing and the stock ignition coils I do believe had external resistors built onto them or into them or something and they both installed so uh went and got a new one but I didn't get a resistor because I didn't know that we needed a resistor because I've never actually wired a coil before. So I gotta go find a resistor somewhere unless I just found it right here. Of course that may not be the resistor. I gotta research that now. Probably not. But this is a 12 volt ignition coil. I presume. So I also presume I need a uh, 1.6 ohm resistor or ballast resistor, so I gotta go to the parts store and find the ballast resistor and wire that in. And then I'll have it running on one bank of four, because obviously this is a dual spark motor, so it's got eight plugs. So, but I, I'm not buying two ignition coils. I'm not paying that. Two resistors wiring two up. Nah. Just wanted to show you here real quick. So I decided to pull the fuel tank out and I wanted to pull the pump out or the pickup out just to see what we're looking at in there, see if I might be able to salvage it. All I salvaged was the ring, but 
This is what I found. She's uh, a little bit crusty. Just a little bit. <laughs> that one is toast, I'd say. So hopefully we don't have all that in the lines. Because hopefully the tank's been out for 20 years. But who knows, probably not. Hopefully that's not all in the lines. Because that's bad. That is bad, bad. Well, it's definitely not several days later. It's probably two days later, because I got busy doing other stuff. Don't look at the mess. That's not my mess. But, anyway. <clears throat> Let's get the old underweb out of here. Get it out of the way. What we got here, you can see I got my resistor here now. Uh, toggle switch, coil, hardware. Went and got me a 50-pack. Of connectors from Walmart those are valuable you know then I went to my stash here and found some good shape uh, connectors here for my toggle switch fit those on there and I also I also brought along a fuse pretty fancy gonna put a fuse on it that's that's not that's, that's abnormal for here anyway got our connectors there uh, we got these for uh, that's for the coil. And these are for the resistor. And they're going to use that. And this was also for the coil. This is another one that goes to either the fuse or the switch. All of these do. Just got five just in case. You never know. I, I, matter of fact, I got six of them. Then we got our extra wires here that need to be cut. This is going to go to the battery right there. And uh, we'll go from there. So I guess we'll start with the battery side of it. Got my wire strippers there. I need uh, wire cutters too. And we'll just get going on it. Come over here and... Uh, Cut this tape. Let's see how much wire we can get out of here. You know, so we can get some extra. We'll just do like that. There we go. Look at that. There is extra. That. And now we gotta make this long enough to reach all the way inside the truck. got so far we got from the battery through the fuse and into the cab and what we got to put on this end is the toggle switch so we got to get more of these
There you go. We figured out is we got power. We're working now. It's all hooked up. Got it running from the battery through the fuse over here. Runs up through the gonna have to run through the hood. Into the cab to the switch, back out of here to the positive of the coil. And then from the positive, I have one from the negative to the resistor, and then from the resistor to here, and this will go into the distributor. What wire into the distributor is the problem? That I do not know, and that I have to figure out. So now that we got that all hooked up, I'll uh, guess I'll get back to you when uh, pull the camera back out when I figure out what wire we're gonna work on and get it hooked up, and uh, see if we got some spark here. Alrighty, I'm gonna do something real smart. And uh, a lot of these wires need 12 volts, so what we're gonna do is just uh, just jump it. Look for sparks, you know. Try and burn some, try and blow something up, you know. That's great. So I'll do like that and just see what we get. Hopefully, this one sparks, hopefully. Nope. 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 That's great. I goofed. Um. I didn't put the negative cable on. That might affect it. So, we're gonna try it again here. See what we get. I'm positive here with the cable now grounded. No sparks, that's good. That's what I'm gonna try to use. It should spark, hopefully it sparks. No sparks. No sparks. That's great. Let's hook it up and see if we got uh, did you turn the switch on? No sparks. Alright. Turn back off. We're gonna bolt this up. And we're just gonna assume the red wire is, is the, the one. We're just gonna assume. And, uh, because we guessed the starter wire correctly. So we'll guesstimate this one correctly, I hope. And then uh, we're gonna clean the, the uh, little bit of groundage under the uh, cap here. And uh, then we're gonna pull this one off. And we're gonna pull the one off over here. And we're gonna take two lawnmower spark plugs and stuff them in there. Turn the switch on real quick. Hit the uh, steely wire and uh, see if we got spark. All right, so. What we did, got this all cleaned up down here. We got a spark tester in this bank here for this side. And then I got a plug right here that I'm gonna stick right here and hold and watch for spark. And uh, he's gonna flip the switch and hit the start wire and we're gonna see what happens. Oh. All right, go ahead. <laughs> We got no spark. That's a great, great thing. That's good. Let's try. Let's swap, let's swap these and see what we get. Look at the fuse. Fuse is uh good. So all right, all right go and flip it and spin it over. No spark. So that's great. Guess we'll go to the next wire. Maybe blow something up this time if we haven't already. All right, flip the switch. Uh, all right, now. Nope. All right, as you can see here, we've, uh, we took some stuff apart and uh, down in there, we took this thing all the way apart. There's screws lying all over the, all over the place, up there, over there on the thingy. Right, it's just great. Now we gotta put it all back together. <laughs> great. But anyway, down in here, I don't know what it, what, what it is down in here. It's uh, I don't even know what this is. 
but uh, we did the uh, old rebuild kit on it. Done rebuilt it. So we're gonna put it back together and uh, we took our uh, module part, wherever it was. Here it is. Our ignition module, which is in the distributor. And looked at what it is it says on the terminals and the red one says ignition B and E. B is grounded. So we know that's grounded. We're gonna ground it to the truck, to the frame. E is connected to the coil, so we're gonna end up I don't I'm not sure what we're gonna do there yet, but we'll work on that. For now we need to put this distributor back together, so we're gonna go and do that. Alright, what we did here. So we took the whole thing apart as you saw. I got it all back together now. In the module, I showed you what it said. So we grounded the one thing that's supposed to be grounded. Switch this thing, the ignition part, over to run as we've been wiring it through here. Goes 12 volt to the coil out here through the resistor. It comes over here into the ignition side of the module. And then down here where it said E, yeah, blue wire. We hooked it up straight to 12 volts on the on the coil, so that's a constant 12 volt supply to the module. So we got 12 volt supply, ground for the module, and the ignition side. Um, we got right here spark tester for I'm assuming bank one. We're hoping that we'll switch these in a minute. Make sure we're having the right bank on. We're hoping that we can get the primary bank to fire. And I'll be, so we got that one, and I'll be holding this up against the block to test spark. And uh, yeah, first we're gonna turn the switch to make sure we don't hear any sizzling because now it's hooked up completely different. And you know, yeah. So anyway, turn the switch. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. That's good. All right. Is it on? Yeah, see if heats. Heats. Through the wires. Oh, no heat, no heat, no heat. Okay, it's good. I'm gonna turn this off so I can hear. That's gonna suck it forever. So, might as well just go ahead and try it. So, uh, go ahead and hit the steel wire. Thunders. <laughs> no. No spark good, so we're gonna switch this. We ain't got no sparkers with this one here. Gonna have to call it maybe. Yuck. <laughs> no spark. So, I don't know what to say. Well, as you can see, it's yet again another day. And, uh, Not looking too good for the old <laughs> Nissan here. Um, you can tell we had it all wired up and we've tried stuff. You see we've been dealing with the ignition module and uh, took the distributor all apart, cleaned it all up, rewired it a bunch of times, trying a whole bunch of different wires, grounds, this, that, and the other. Even uh, did a number on my spark plug. Tester. Yep. Um, but anyway, we still have no spark. So, being that, uh, well, I'll show you here. Being that it's not very worth much anyway, we're deeming it that it doesn't run. That's just what we're going to have to call it now. That's what we're gonna sell it as because really I need to have this truck gone if in 12 days. I have just under two weeks to have this truck gone and sold and everything and out of here. So I don't have time to get it running. I don't have the money to put into it to get it running. Not worth my time or money even if I did to get it running because as you can see it's not. In great shape. It's not worth it. Only thing that it is uh, worth to me would be if I, being that I paid a hundred bucks for it, now I'm gonna keep it as a 
be in a truck and just have fun with it. Maybe if it was four wheel drive, then I'd probably keep it around and try to get it running and use it as a farm truck because I could use a farm truck. But but it's a two wheel drive, light duty truck. It's not worth it to me. Hopefully it's worth something motor or something because motor draw it spins over. It's obviously got compression. So hopefully transmission shifts. You know, hopefully someone can use that and. Uh, Hoping to get a decent amount for it. Um, I'm looking, I'll be, I'll be very happy with 500 since it's so straight. Or aside from that, you know, bed and everything straight, and uh, motors got compression and stuff. So I'm hoping 500 seems pretty, about, about right to me, pretty fair, and uh, that's what we're gonna try and get for it. Doesn't have a title, so. Uh, We'll try and do that, and um, yeah, I'm going to take my coil and wire back out of it, because I need to save all that. But yeah, we're just going to sell it as is, and uh, call it a day. I'm going to push this thing out here, and uh, we're going to clean this bar up, push my other vehicle in, and we'll start working on that. Will it run after 20 years? If it had spark, probably. But... I haven't been able to figure out how to get spark on this truck and I don't be it under my circumstances. No, it does not run and will not run after 20 years. And that's just the sad end to the old song story here. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, have a great night. slammed it. Yeah. Just gonna have to be like with some diesel here with you know, Duramax girls. Oh, oh we got it. Look at that.